people are unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Love them anyway. So by the time I went into pictures, not smiling was, was mechanical with me. I just didn't pay attention to it. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men, with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. I only know I want to be wonderful. That sight gag could only have been devised and pulled off by Buster Keaton. He was a great athlete who did almost all his own stunts, and some of them are absolutely incredible. Keaton could do it all, but he often didn't take credit for it. In fact, he poked fun of credit hogs in the playhouse, in which, with cunning camera magic, he played every part, even his own wife. Keaton's real-life widow, Eleanor, now travels the globe attending tributes to her late husband and keeping the flame lit in his memory. She knows firsthand what a perfectionist he was and how audience previews and the willingness to work on a sequence until it was just right paid off for a film like Seven Chances. He didn't like the film very much and he thought it wasn't all that wonderful. And there was a point where he started running down a hill to get rid of these all these would-be brides. And they dislodged a couple of rocks and the rocks started chasing him. And when they saw that in the projection, he says, uh-huh, this could do it. So they went back and built 2,500 paper mache rocks of all sizes and went back and put, went down the hill again. And that, he said that saved the film. Eleanor also knows the question everyone asks when first encountering Buster's image on film. My daughter wants to know why Buster never smiled. How did he explain that? Well, it's because he was raised in vaudeville. And when he was four years old, he started working for a living. And they found out very early that when he laughed and had a good time on the stage, the audience didn't think it was funny. He had to take very seriously what he was doing in order for the audience to enjoy it more. Buster's other trademark, beside his great stone face, was his pork pie hat. Start with a regular old fedora from the market, I mean, from the hat store. And, uh, and what do you do? And voila. There you go. A Buster Keaton pork pie hat. <laughs> Official issue. Official issue. Like watching the videos, just seeing that hat helps bring a movie great back to life. Uh, tell me about some special touches and, and, and scenes in Sherlock Jr. Well, there was one, his valet was dressed as an old lady and he was running from the villains and the valet says, come on, come to me. And he backed up against a wooden fence, Buster ran and he had a tray of trinkets and he went right through the tray and right through the fence and the valet walked away and walked down and left the villains standing there like, you know, <laughs> Not knowing what had happened. Well, was, what it was, yeah. the back of the tray, the lid of the tray, was hinged this way. Oh. And there was people, the fence was hinged this way. And there was two people behind. He had two wooden rods that came out, and he hooked his arms over them. And the two people behind picked his feet way up, and the, the skirt of the dress was, was weighted. So it stayed in position. And he went through the tray and right underneath through, through the, the valet that was being held up. They immediately, the minute Buster cleared, they dropped his feet down and he walked away. So it looks like he's gone right through the valet. Yeah. And they had to wait the skirt so it wouldn't move, so yeah. that they couldn't sit, see what was going on behind. Sheer magic. Sheer mm -hmm. magic. Now, so much of this genius of his involved physical situations, and you've indicated that aplenty in the last few minutes here, certainly put himself through some amazing feats. 
Uh, what were some of the most dangerous ones now uh, in his life, Eleanor Keaton, that he told you about or you saw or whatever? Well, the most dangerous, of course, was uh, in Steamboat Bill Jr. In the, in the tornado where the front of the building dropped and, and over him, and he went through the second story window. The window was measured, so he had two inches on each shoulder and about four inches on top of his head and he had a, a copper nail in the dirt to find and put his toes against. Oh. And the building weighed 3,000 pounds. Could have killed him if it had oh, been. Oh, of course. I didn't realize that. I thought it would have been of a very light substance. No. Because he didn't look at the way no. it clamored down. The, it the, was, the, well, the it had window, to be. It fits right over him. It, it, yeah. It's astonishing. And it thing. had to be weighted and nailed down securely because, uh, they had those wind machines on. Yes. And if it warps or turns the least bit, he's dead. Oh, boy, I'm sure. That was one take. That was, was there any other you want to comment on? That's about it. That's about it, yeah. That's enough. That, that one, that's enough to oh, yeah. finish you off. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, it's terrifying to hear. I never realized that mm -hmm. to this moment. Often wondered about that. Oh, that's, that's absolutely incredible. Did he suffer, uh, Eleanor, any ill effects in later life or all of his falls? Because he took a lot of falls in his No, family. he didn't seem to. He didn't uh, have a lot of people doing the type of things that he did would have arthritis or yeah. something like that, and he never did. Never. Of course, he was still falling when he was 70. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was raised doing it. And he knew, knew, what he, knew what he was doing. He never hurt himself. He knew how to fall. Yeah, that's he only got hurt a couple times, and it wasn't his fault. Did he know Chaplin? Yeah. They were very good friends. Good friends. Many years, you know, yeah, back well, in the silent era. Yeah, yeah. Was there any uh, rivalry uh, that you ever detected? No, because them? they didn't have the same, they would trade material. Yeah. Because Buster would think of a real good gag or something, and it wasn't for him. It didn't fit his character. And, but it would fit Charlie's. He'd pass it or, on. Or Lloyd or any of the other comics. Yeah. They would trade things that they knew were not right for them. That's a wonderful spirit. I'm not but, sure that prevails today. No. Well, no. once sound came in, everything disappeared. They did appear, didn't they, now, I think, in the 70 or something like that. Lime 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 Light, Light, yes, mm -hmm. around the piano, mm -hmm. which is one of the funniest scenes I've ever seen, the two of them. Mm -hmm. that was, uh, that's, that's history making, isn't it? Yep. What about his problem with alcohol? That was uh, magnified. I mean, he used to drink, but socially until after the divorce and the MGM thing where he fell apart and all of that. He was into heavy drinking for about a year and a half. Oh. And uh, then he dried out. He never touched a drop for five years. And uh, all the later years of our marriage, he would have a glass of beer before dinner. That was his cocktail. Mm -hmm. and that was it. That was it. Oh. Well, when he was drinking heavily, did it affect his films at all? or? Uh, I don't know. I didn't know him then. Yeah, that, be that was before, before me. Before but he time. didn't look well. No, on the no, screen. No. Those two or three of those last ones at MGM, he did not look no. good. No, so maybe just in appearance. I'm sure he wouldn't let it affect his role, though. I can imagine if he wanted know. to drink, he'd drink after the day, after the day. But then I didn't know him, so yeah. I just wondered. Uh, favorite Keaton films that I, I think I may have asked you that. Uh, his and was you went the, over general. the general. And the yes, those those were the his ones. was the general because yeah, it was he. The that was his idea. He, that was a book. Yes. And he read the book and uh, took the book to the studio. And the whole, his group of four or five people that were always with him, they went to work on it. Buster's very special gifts. Well, I think, I mean, aside from the fact that he was funny, but his mode of working was, he was so mathematically perfect that there was never any sloppiness. Everything was very precise. And from point to point, it was a straight line at all times. And I think that made, it helped make the film still as good today as they were then. Eleanor, how was Buster Keaton treated by the movie business in his later years? Oh, they, well, those who didn't know him before were anxious to meet him, and they all knew his work. So they just treated him like their little pet person, you know. He got special treatment and special dressing rooms and, you know. Everybody was always running with food or cups of tea or something, whether he wanted it or not, you know. 
He was a privileged character. Wasn't there a time when he stopped making films, though, when there, there weren't the movies to be made? Or am I wrong? Did he make them right to the very end? No, he was, well, not so much films. I meant but, those later years. Yeah, well, he was in television more than he was films ah, later. Ah, yes. Because he never quit working in TV once it started. But the movie industry didn't... Uh... Uh, they weren't making that many films, and he would, didn't really have that much time anyway. I see. One year, we went to New York to do two shows in September. And we got home Christmas Eve, and he averaged two television shows a week all that time. And he finally just said, enough. Just and we just escaped out of town and came home. Eleanor, did you watch his films on video and cassettes? Or whatever? Uh, there really aren't that many out yet. I see. But uh, I think Hospitality and The General mm -hmm. are both out. That's about it. Did he have any problems when sound came in? No. None? He had a heavy baritone voice. Yes. yes. And no particular accent. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he was so visual always, wasn't mm -hmm. he? He only talked when he had to. What are the, your opinions uh, uh, of the, or on it rather, the movie biography called The Buster Keaton Story starring Donald O'Connor as Buster? Opinions? It was pitiful. Oh. It was... Uh, except Buster and Donald O'Connor worked, the two of them worked out all the comedy sequences together. And they had a wonderful time doing that. But uh, the plot had nothing whatever to do with him. It was inane, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Had nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. They had made a picture about a drunk woman. And it was very successful, made a lot of woman, money. So they said, oh, okay, we'll do it again, you know. If 10 Indians are fine, 20 I must be better. Yeah. Did you accompany him to the Venice Film Festival in September of mm -hmm. 1965? What are some memories of that trip? Well, he was quite ill by then and very tired because he'd been making a film, uh, an Italian film. And uh, we went up there, flew up just for two or three days and back again. And uh, he wasn't feeling well at all. But he thoroughly enjoyed it. They made a big do about him, and they showed the uh, film, The Beckett Thing. And uh, they gave him a big reception, and they got him up on the stage for like an interview, and the whole theater was packed with press. Oh. Honored, honored mm -hmm. so beautifully. I'm talking now, of course, to Eleanor Keaton. I've been talking to you for some time, and you yourself are no slouch when it comes to the screen, I discovered. And, um, dancing yeah. and swimming and doing all kinds of things in films with, with such stars as Esther Williams and uh, Durante, Abbott and Costello, Red Skelton. Yeah. What, what about that picture? Uh, I worked in a couple of things with him, but... Uh, Bathing Beauty, I'm yeah. thinking about. I adored Red. He was so wonderful. Well, my favorite reason why I liked Red was no matter where we went, if it was a big gala thing or just to a restaurant and ran into him or anything else... He was the only living human outside of our close personal friends that would say, Hi, Eleanor, how are you? And ignore Buster altogether. <laughs> that, and nobody good. else ever recognized me. He's the only man in the world that ever recognized me. Oh, three cheers for Red. Yeah. For, uh, that's delightful. Delightful. Yeah. So, uh, you have happy memories of those? Yeah, lots of pictures. Yeah. You lots of pictures yeah. dancing for, uh -huh. for several years. Eh? Yeah. And then, of course, I worked with Buster a lot. Of course. In Europe and on television yeah. and everything, busy, too. Busy lady. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you very much, Eleanor. Eleanor Keaton, it's been a delight to meet you. You're a very lovely lady, and uh, you've got some great memories there. What a great, great man. One yeah. of the great men of cinema, if not the greatest, eh? Mm -hmm. Could be. When we decided to get married, the doctor and the other friend took me aside separately and for about two hours each to convince me all the reasons why I should not marry him. And I listened to all of it very carefully and then we went and got married. But uh, they were protecting him from me. He'd had enough trouble, he didn't need me. So, and 28 years later, it, if they'd been around, they would have been surprised. Uh, we never told him what was the matter with him. He thought he had chronic bronchitis. And uh, outside of having really bad coughing spells, where he'd be almost totally out of breath, uh, everything, you know, he just kept getting progressively weaker. 
and uh, we played bridge all afternoon the day before he died. ready to be buried. He had a rosary in one pocket and, his de and a deck of cards in the other, so he was set for whichever direction he was going.